Hi everyone, welcome back to Reissued. My name is Andrew. Today we're going to be exploring the Trompeloid trend in fashion using paint on fabric, because we like to paint fabric here on this channel. Trompeloid is an art technique that uses realistic painting to kind of create an optical illusion. I think the term from what I read was coined in the 1800s, but it dates back quite a bit further than that. It's kind of that thing where like if you paint a window on a wall to look realistic and it sort of makes you think there's a window, but there's not really a window, that's the effect that I'm talking about here. So this trend has been borrowed and explored by the fashion world many times over the years, but it has sort of reemerged as a trend for 2022. Uh, sort of the face of that trend is this collection by The Y Project, which features some vintage prints from Jean-Paul Gaultier. The result is kind of this like kind of cool see-through x-ray like see my body through my clothes kind of vibe. So when I saw that collection, I thought it would be really fun to explore. Originally, I had intended to make two jackets for this video, one that referenced this a little bit more with the black and white, and a similar jacket with more bright neon colors because I love how that was incorporated into the collection as well. However, when I was doing a little bit of research, I came across these awesome Jean-Paul Gaultier pants. If you're a regular here on my channel, you know I can't resist a biker moment and I just had to paint these as well. So we're gonna be painting a pair of jeans from my closet with this effect, and then we're also gonna be painting a canvas jacket that I had in my stock box with more of this kind of vibe. I'm so excited to show you guys how this stuff turned out. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, let me know that you like this video, and let's jump on in. So to start out, I thought we would talk about a few different options that you have for painting on fabric, different materials to use. I'm not an expert on this, but I have had quite a bit of experience painting on different types of fabric with different types of paint. Um, so I have some examples here behind me and I thought we would check those out. If you're painting on leather, head over to my painted leather jackets video or my part two video. In that video, I go into a little bit more depth about prepping the fabric and sealing it afterward. So if you're painting on leather, head over there. If you're painting on other fabrics, keep on watching. So first option is using fabric painting, duh. Clearly I'm no stranger to the trompeloid effect. I painted these pieces a couple of years ago. These are painted with fabric paint. One thing I'll say about all kinds of paint, doesn't matter what kind of paint you're working with, if you layer it up a lot to get a lot of opacity, it is gonna get crunchy in my experience. Um, so this one right here, the paint is almost dry brushed on, so there's hardly any paint on it at all, so the shirt is still really super soft. Whereas this one, there's a little bit more opacity, so it starts to be a little bit stiff right around where there is some um, real opacity there. Fabric paint is a really good option to work with because it really is gonna bond a little bit better to the fabric and it's gonna wash a little bit better. Because these items are gonna be close to the body, I wanted them to be super washable, so I thought the fabric paint was the best place to go. The only problem with fabric paint is if you're covering a whole lot of surface area, it can get really expensive to cover that much which is why I have some other options. This guy was painted with fabric paint as well. The other thing to know about fabric paint in my experience is that it can have a little bit of sheen. It can kind of alter the sheen of the fabric, whereas if you just paint straight on with acrylics, it's a little bit more matte. So in this case, in addition to the white paint, I had to go in with some black to get rid of some stains and things. And so it was changing up the uh, sheen of the fabric a little bit. So I coated the entire thing with a fabric Mod Podge. You can see it gives it a little bit of sheen. It almost feels like leather, but it did make it quite stiff. So um, that's another option. I mentioned the fabric paint can be a little bit pricey, so to cover large areas, it's not the most economical thing. So that is why sometimes I paint with latex house paint. You can see there was a lot of coverage required on this piece, and so it just felt more effective to go in with some house paint. Since this is outerwear, I figured that it would be a little bit more forgiving um, since it won't go through the wash that much, if at all. Um, I have been wearing this coat all winter and it's been really holding up quite well. So another option there for you. And finally, there's the method that we're gonna go with today where we're gonna mix some acrylic paints with a fabric medium. Um, so what this is gonna do is essentially transform my acrylic paint into a fabric paint by incorporating those ingredients that help it bond to the fabric to give it that slip and a little bit more shine and make it a little bit more washable. Since these are going on jeans, I want them to be able to go in the washing machine if necessary. These Jean-Paul Gaultier pants were shown on the runway in metallic gold and silver. I'm guessing they were reworked onto black denim for the ready-to-wear version to make them a little more sellable. These metallics are a lot of look. I mixed up a mustard yellow color with some bronze yellow, a little cadmium yellow, and a little white. I add my fabric medium to help the paint bond to the fabric and to give a little more glide. It also makes the paint go a bit further, which is always a good thing with these pricier paints. I started by placing some tape along the sides to give a framework for where the stripes were going to go. I start by roughing in the outlines of the major shapes. 
I'm paying attention mostly to the highlights, the brightest, or in this case, the most saturated yellow parts, and the shadows, in this case, the areas that are totally black. These are the strongest and most obvious shapes, so it's helpful to block these in first before creating the most subtle shadows. When first laying in the outlines, I recommend wiping most of the paint off your brush and going in as lightly as possible with very little paint. That way, if you need to readjust the outline, you have a little bit more wiggle room. Plus, overloading the areas with paint all at once can leave you with way too much paint and nowhere for it to go. It's much easier to build up gradually than to have to remove a puddle of paint. This brush looks so tiny compared to what I usually work with on this scale. But with all the little details everywhere, I don't know how I could have used a bigger brush. Needless to say, this took forever. When I reached the knee pad section, I used some tape again to help me, partly to create a defined edge in some areas, but mostly to help me keep track of which diamond I was on and to create straight lines across all the diamonds. A word of caution that I keep forgetting lately. It's always a good idea to stand back or back away every few minutes and make sure the macro is working as well as the micro. I was so wrapped up in painting the tiny details that I failed to realize that this whole knee pad placement is set way higher than it is on the other side. There's definitely some asymmetry in the original jeans since the pants are meant to look a little squashed, scanned, and printed on the jeans. However, this just looked really disproportionate. And I might have caught it earlier had I stood up and backed away. All right, day two on this project, we are back. Uh, I'm gonna get started on the pants again. Let me show you what's going on here. So I'm pretty happy with how things look overall. Um, I'm still a little like worried about how this leg just feels a lot smaller and shorter than that leg. I have placed some painter's tape there. I'm gonna bring that yellow line down a little bit, which will help with the symmetry sort of uh, tricking you into believing that it's symmetrical at least. Um, I'm also gonna touch up some of the yellow in some places and then get the stripes going on this guy. I go back in and correct my mistake as best I could by dropping the area above the quilted knee pads down lower, lengthening the leg a bit, and widening it in some places to help it read as large as the left side. I push the highlights further by building up paint and reintroduce shadows with a little black paint. Black paint also helped me erase any mistakes. I also lessened the contrast in some areas by dry brushing over the shadows with the yellow. Too much contrast seemed to look a little cartoony. Softening the shadows a bit in some places helped to alleviate that. With the yellow mostly in place, I added my stripes to the outside. The burgundy color took a minute to get right. A mix of red, magenta, black, and phthalo blue got me there. This part was pretty simple and satisfying after the yellow. The stripe was exactly the width of my brush, so I could easily fill it in, just avoiding the shadow areas that needed to stay black. I added a little white to the mix to highlight areas of the stripes. And now I repeat with white.
I finish off by adding a couple highlights with my white. The blue barely shows up on camera, but I added a little white to the mix again like I did for the burgundy to create a few brighter areas. All right, so I'm gonna let that dry a little bit on the front. I have a few touch-ups left to do with the yellow, but I'll go ahead and wait until I mix up the color uh, for the yellow for the back. Um, that way I don't have to wash everything out again. I feel like I've wasted so much paint on this project, mixing and mixing just to use a tiny little bit of paint, but um, it is what it is. Um, I'm pretty happy with how it's looking. I'm trying to remind myself that this is done in paint, you know, like, the uh, the original ones were, were printed so they can capture a little bit more detail than I'm able to achieve. Um, but, you know, I think it's gonna be pretty cool. All right, so I'm gonna paint the rest of the back of the pants off camera. I found myself getting bored painting it and I thought maybe you were getting bored watching it. So uh, you can see how they turn out in the reveal at the end of the video. Um, the pants are really more about the front anyway. The back is just there as sort of like a supporting role. So we're gonna move on to painting the jacket. Um, I have been procrastinating on that all week. Um, I'm scared to get started because I'm worried that I'm gonna mess it up and I feel like I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, I think we all have those moments in our creative lives where we're like just procrastinating out of fear. So if you have a project at home that you are putting off because you're afraid how it's going to go, just know that you're never going to feel ready to do that. So go and get started. Pause this video. Do it right now. Yeah, I just, I just have to jump in and give it a shot and see how it goes. I start by drawing in parallel vertical white lines every half inch. This time I'm marking the half inch points along the bottom, lining up my ruler with the marks, and then eyeballing an equal distance from the zipper and then the previous line. However, later on, I end up making better use of my transparent ruler by lining up the half inch line the whole way. Both ways work, so just use whatever you have on hand. It occurred to me after I finished this whole project that a pinstripe blazer would be amazing for this project and would be so much easier to execute since the lines are already there. Why do I always make things harder than they have to be? I try the jacket on to mark some anatomical landmarks on my body with painter's tape. The magic of this jacket is how well it matches up to the model's body, so that you get that amazing x-ray transparent effect. So even though I'm working from a reference photo, I have those landmarks in place that will help me make adjustments to match the print to my body. With those rough markings in place, we can start painting. Yikes! I start in super cautiously on the most highlighted areas, similar to how I started the jeans. Again, I look for the places where the brightest highlights meet the darkest shadows and start to block in some lines. However, this time I can only paint vertically along my pencil lines. Tricky, tricky. I try to place my tape in the dark shadow areas, so in some places I'm able to paint right over the tape line to get that hard contrast. I can always soften those areas later. Unlike the pants, I really, really don't want to use any black paint on this, so there isn't much room for error here. A couple times I lost track of where I was in the design and extended a line too far into a deep shadow area that needed to stay black. Although I couldn't undo it fully, I was able to build up the highlights around those areas enough to make them read as shadows. So I am sort of at a good stopping point on the front left panel. It turned out a lot better than I thought it was going to. It wasn't too difficult. It's just going to be a little bit time consuming, a little bit tedious. I think I can build up the contrast a little bit more by putting some more paint on and thickening up those white lines. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and make my way around the rest of the jacket just to make sure everything kind of gets done evenly.
To draw the sleeve lines, I lay the jacket as flat as possible and manipulate the sleeve a little to get as much of a straight line along the fold as possible. I start measuring from that line and work forward. Later, I flatten the sleeve and measure from my original line going backward. I tried the jacket on again to mark the exact placement of my thumb so that I can be sure that the inside lines match up to my hand when my arms are down and relaxed. Gradually, I start to apply more paint to make the highlights more opaque. I also start to widen the lines a bit in those bright highlight areas to take away some of the black space in between and make them feel even brighter. For the front, I had been working from this reference image from the Y Project show, but since I could not find any images of this look from the side or the back, I had to switch up my reference images to an original Jean-Paul Gaultier piece. In some ways, the back was trickier than the front, since it had much larger areas and more subtle shadows, while the front was all abs and hard lines. My strategy, again, was to identify the lightest highlights first, sketch those in, and then gradually connect the lines and fill things in. Talk about tedious. To finish the sleeves and connect the front and back at the shoulders, I moved the jacket to my form to paint it in 3D. I always like to do this near the end of a project to be able to see it from multiple angles and far away and make adjustments. As I started to thicken the lines even more, I played with turning my brush to transition between a wider line and a narrower line. As tiny as it was, this brush was such a great shape and size for both of these pieces. I find the subtle adjustments and tiny details to be the most fun part of any project. The blocking in feels so boring after a while, but the fine details can make such a difference and take such little time. So satisfying. And with the final details added, both pieces are done. I hope you love how these projects turned out. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and to create with me. I'll see you guys soon.